And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, they could now go back. They saw him. The Creator was alive. They had embraced him. Again, they sang about him. Again, they returned. The first Christmas in heaven was complete. The king was in his place. The Lord was in a manger. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now, right now, go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made unto him. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, as the angel had said unto them. And they returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, as it was told them by the angel. As it was told them by the angel. The angels had to declare who this was. The angels couldn't absent themselves from his glory. They longed for the moment they could embrace him again. And they did and returned with satisfaction. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, the first Christmas in heaven was a sweet reunion as the citizen angels absented themselves to see him but a moment and then return with purpose fulfilled. I wonder if we would be angelic. I wonder if we would be responsive. At this Christmas season, the least we can do is to embrace the Lord of glory, is to recount the wonder of his birth, to recognize that heaven is not the same without him, but Jesus is there forever. To realize that earth would not be the same without him. Suppose Jesus had not come. A great scholar recently wrote a book, Suppose Christ Had Not Come. Had he not come, prophecy would be deplete of its validity. Had Jesus not come, there would be no scientific verification that God knew future events because God prescribed in Daniel the exact day he was to present himself on Palm Sunday and the calculation of his years so the very moment of his birth was anticipated in prophecy. But if he had not come, prophecy would have lost its validity. Secondly, prophecy would have lost its subject because the spirit of prophecy is the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible would have lost its validity. Creation would have lost its meaning because there would be no way for those created in the image of God to embrace God face to face because there's not one of us who's qualified to be the Savior. There's not one of us who can triumph over death, hell, and the grave. So Jesus had to come to fulfill prophecy, to fulfill the personage of prophecy, and to provide salvation for us. Had Jesus not come, his influence by millions of little mothers explaining to their child at Christmas time that there was hope would have been gone, would be non-existent. The purpose in life of missionaries who have given their lives on foreign soils and martyrs who have gladly sacrificed their lives at the stake and at the guillotine would be non-existent. Their lives would be random process of hopelessness. The future of planet Earth would have no hope had Jesus not come. Personal salvation would not be realized. And watch this. God has made a city. The dimensions are 1,500 miles high, 
1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles deep. There's enough room in the mansions of glory. If a million souls were saved every day from creation of this very moment, for us to all have room in the city of God. But if Jesus had not come, that city would be vacant of occupant. Had Jesus not come, I would have no meaning to my life. I have relationships with good people, but it's all centered around Jesus Christ. Now, He came. He lived. He walked our streets. He went to Calvary. He died. He rose again. He's back in heaven, embraced by the angels. One of the angels said at the resurrection of Christ, He's not here. We've been watching every moment. He's not here. Come see the place where the Lord lay. And as He ascended to heaven, the announcement was made, this same Jesus by the angels, this same Jesus will so come in like manner as you've seen Him go. The first Christmas in heaven was a reunion, was a fulfillment for an eternity for the angels. But now this Christmas can be an eternal fulfillment for you. Would you right now just pray this simple prayer from your heart. Just pray, dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you to step in my heart and live. Complete me. Save me. Cover me with your blood. Right now, come in. I'm yours. If you prayed that prayer, then not only did Jesus come down that first Christmas, He came in to your heart today. And I trust that you'll realize that your life is designed and is purposed to know Him and to follow the Lord of the universe. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.